It's 420 somewhere, and right now that somewhere is right here. Hello there, I'm Janae Burris. And I'm Jake Brown, and welcome to the Cannabis Show, where we talk all things weed. How are you, Janae? Fantastic. Great weekend <laughs> in Denver. What'd you do? Uh, well, super hot. I laid in the sun a lot. Other people complained. I loved it. Is that, is that like LA? Is that you? I love that warmth, that like stinging. I was like the only it's person outside tanning. That's what tripped me out. <laughs> I was like, just me, Denver? Some of you need this. Uh, taco Fest. Do you went to the Taco Fest? Is it like a legitimate taco festival now? Because I. I don't know what made it a taco fest before, other than I was paying money for access to like a lot of tacos in one area. That's what it seemed like, but the okay. lines were <laughs> way too long, so I didn't get in that line. I went to El Chingones. Oh, I like that spot. That spot was pretty good. What'd you Ran get? I got an enchilada, because, well, I got a taco. It was just all right. But the enchilada was banging. <laughs> Wait, so enchilada the taco was festival, you, was was this at the taco festival? Or did you I leave the taco festival to go somewhere else for tacos and then got an enchilada? I did, okay? <laughs> because it's still Colorado. It's a snow food. It's it's a hit and miss type of thing. Uh, I do like the tacos at Tacos de Mexico. Those are the only tacos I like. Shout out to Kristen Rand Van Horn for that sweet little spot. It, they are perfect. Yeah, that hidden gem that everybody that loves. hidden gem with the long line. <laughs> 30 minutes to get tacos. Worth it, though. Well, that's like half a Denver brunch line. I mean, that's nice. Yeah. No uh, mimosas, though. Um, what about you? What have you been up to? Um, okay, my favorite tacos, uh, Pinche Tacos, which stands for effing tacos. Can we say fucking on the show? Just well. did. All right. <laughs> um, I'm into them, but then I also had, last night, I had my first pigtail taco. So it's and? like a, a pigtail, and then they put crispy uh, pig ear on it. And then I tried a new vegetable, jicama. Shout out to jicama, I'm a fan. <laughs> Pronouncing it right, so that's a start. That's great. I'm just, a lot of, yeah. I pronounced that one wrong, so. I'm, I'm in. It was at this place called Senor Bear. Um, they do, it was mostly vegetables, so I was like, well, I can get some meat with my vegetables, okay. and made it happen. That sounded good. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get to our week in weed. Uh, okay, so there's no Jeff Sessions, but <laughs> New Jersey Governor Chris Christie is back in the news after calling a hearing on marijuana legalization in his state a dog and pony show instead of his preferred steak and bacon show. Now, <laughs> <laughs> the proposed bill would allow adults uh, many options to consume cannabis, including possession of up to one ounce of flour, but it seems ripe for veto as Christie continues to claim marijuana is a quote-unquote gateway drug. For someone who almost faced criminal charges over the Bridgegate scandal, you'd think he would avoid the metaphor, right, Janelle? No. <laughs> um, now, it seems like the best hope for legal weed in New Jersey is Democratic nominee Phil Murphy, so get out there and shill for Phil. All right. Uh, a 21-year-old Colorado Springs man attempted to test the limits of Amendment 64 when he decided to whip up a batch of hash oil in his parents' laundry room slash basement apartment. <laughs> At least he's working, right? right. Uh, he's building his own business from the underground uh, level up. Uh, the Colorado Supreme Court has ruled that hash oil extraction is more than mere manufacturing and requires licensing. After spilling butane and causing an explosion which lit the floor on fire. Young Austin Joseph Lent was arrested and charged with arson and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Now this part sticks out of my head. I'm <laughs> guessing uh, the minor was maybe his 17 year old girlfriend because what's cooler than a drug manufacturing boyfriend uh, with his own basement apartment when you're 17, right? I'm guessing that's what happened. Uh, nothing's <laughs> cooler than that. Let's end it at that. You're pretty cool, dude. You're pretty cool. I would just, I mean, listen, the lesson is don't ever blast indoors how many places need to blow up before we figure this out, dummies. Yeah. Um, staying with the crime beat, an Illinois mailman was busted for double dipping on the government's dime, selling dime bags to people on his what? route. What? He even had the perfect excuse when a drug dog barked at him, right? <laughs> like he's like a mailman, all perfect. dogs bark at That's me. That's genius, kind of genius. It was kind of genius. Um, no, it was neither rain nor sleet, but a van across the street that mm -hmm. busted Christopher Baxter when he was under surveillance doing old school hand-to-hand -hand drug deals on on his route. Uh, when confronted, he told them he had a quote, pound of weed, uh, and it's also found with the drug dealer starter pack of plastic bags, digital sale, and a uh, heat sealer. 
Expect him to receive lots of letters from prison pen pals. Oh, man. Okay, Saudi Arabia's number one country music artist, Toby <laughs> Keith. <laughs> what is that a thing? Yes, I don't, I don't really know if that's a credit or a dig. I don't know if somebody's <laughs> trying to insult him with that. Uh, but he's finally landed upon a new hit in Willie's red-haired Sensamia. What is that? Sensamia? Sensamia. I mean, there's a lot of different pronunciations. Really? I go, I, yeah, I go with the more colloquial Sensamia. Oh, okay. I don't if, know. Ask some If Jake fans. Brown says it's Sensamia, it's Sensamia, <laughs> I think. Uh, Sensamia is his muse, okay? Uh, the title song, Wacky Tabacky, might lead Ugh. you to suspect Keith is an inexperienced consumer <laughs> or a narc. Nark. Because who still calls it Wacky Tabacky besides Usher Board members at my church? Uh, <laughs> but the title suits this underwhelming guitar thumper, which had me thinking for the first time in my whole life, maybe weed is not that cool. Um, <laughs> I think it's supposed to be a fun song, but most of the lyrics make Toby sound like he's an undercover DEA agent from the 50s. First of all, marijuana and tobacco are not the same plant. Are they the same plant, Jay? I'm going to confirm that's a big no. All right, they are not the same plant, dude. So wacky tobacco <laughs> is kind of hacky tobacco. Yes. I was desperate to shoehorn that one in, guys. Thank you for letting me do that. Um, you're an artist. Toby, you're an artist. How about some creativity? Cannabis culture is rife with clever puns. Jake, give me three quick weed-related titles for Toby. Top of your head. You told me that I was going to be able to do this in the moment. Um, save a horse, smoke a doobie? Boom. You see? You see how <laughs> no, easy that, was, not that was? You see how easy that was, Toby? Okay. You can take, you can, <laughs> you can two-toe her. Now someone's going to do this. What did we just unleash on the world? Please. I hope they make all of that music. Save okay. or smoke doobie. See? <laughs> Why is the horse going to be saved in that scenario? Somebody just getting a horse super cheached up? I don't know. You're real good at these, though, so I trust that that works somehow. All right. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so here's one of the lyrics. You can two-toke her or you can one-toke him. What does this even mean, Toby? What does this mean? It's like he wrote a very square song then asked a computer to translate it to weed speak. Uh, I'm not going to take all the time here to hate on Toby Keith. I mean, it's not like he's Jeff Sessions. Boo. Boo. <laughs> Anybody else notice how Sessions looks like a clone of Ross Perot who's missing a chromosome? <laughs> I just noticed that this weekend. Anywho, take a listen for yourself to this song and check out the review by our cannabis cannabis staff feel free to send your much better song titles to negative negro i'll hate them yeah. uh for more on that and all of the stories this week check out the cannabis.co now from a tinier more serious desk here's our own business and policy writer alicia wallace with this week's quick hit now what happens in legal cannabis states has to stay in legal cannabis states when it comes to touting the business of weed, the tourism offices in Colorado and other recreational cannabis states have been pretty tight-lipped. The reasons for that? Colorado's tourism chief, Kathy Ritter, recently told the cannabis that, one, the feds still aren't too keen on legalization, two, Colorado has strict marijuana advertising regulations, and three, well, it's just not a major driver for travelers, she said. Other rec states and potential rec states, like the Live and Let Live Nevada, are taking wait-and-see approaches. The tourism brass in those states say they're open to the prospects of marijuana tourism. It just might take more dominoes to tumble. I'm Alicia Wallace with this week's Quick Hit. Thanks, Alicia. Today's guest has been seen on Comedy Central. He has his own special on Netflix and hosts the Here We Are podcast. Join me in welcoming Shane Moss to the show. Shane, hey! hey. Uh, so you, you've been to Colorado. You, just, you, you were on tour here. Um, but it's kind of weird because a decade ago, you kind of were launched into the national spotlight here at the now defunct uh, HBO US Comedy Arts Festival. Yeah. Over the last decade, which has changed more, Colorado or the comedy of Shane Moss? Um, the comedy of Shane Moss, I'd say. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, I used to be like a short, absurdist, one-liner kind of comedian that was, it was really good for like getting on late night and Comedy Central and all those things. And then I just kind of, uh, got bored with that and started doing more uh, themed shows and trying to kind of push it and talk about more meaningful things to me. And so now I kind of do more like solo kind of shows. I don't like put wigs on and change characters <laughs> and there's not like crying and stuff. No, it's, that's too bad. It's very much, <laughs> right, I, I know, like, maybe the, 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 ne the next show, show <laughs> I, might, I might include some crying. 
But this is very much, I mean, it's still stand up, but what I do what, now is what's more the name like. What's your show was? Well, I just wrapped up a tour called The Good Trip, and okay. it was 111 stops. Um, yeah, all about psychedelics. Okay. And I. Because uh, you kind of bridge yeah, the gap I, between. I, I like to think of you as what I would consider like an unlicensed scientist, if that's like. Yeah, that. I mean, I, I, I consider myself a science communicator. Um, <laughs> definitely. Right. Okay. I mean, I'm definitely not a scientist, and I definitely don't. I am not conscientious enough to mull through a bunch of data and show up on time. Do you like the medium <laughs> from Poltergeist? Uh, like you. <laughs> yeah, I know how you. to take these ideas and put them in ways that uh, that um, that your average person that's never heard about a given topic can okay. understand. You can like TV dinner up some science. Yeah, so even Perfect. with my psychedelic show, I try to present it in a way that someone that's never done psychedelic before can understand. And it try, I try to have a kind of a reasonable, balanced approach, of, uh, even though I am like this, look at this barefooted hippie. Shoeless <laughs> Joe. <laughs> yeah. it's, I, I'm, I'm way into bare feet. And is this, that the this carpet's amazing. Is it like a summer thing, or are you bare feet all year round now? Um, I'm trying to transition. I'm trying, trying to feel to more comfortable yeah. being barefoot more often without people like looking at you weird. Wait, how tough are the bottom of your feet? Because that's really the, the part that... They're not you, tough enough yet. Okay. You gotta <laughs> take some time. But I used to live uh, across the street from the beach and go out every day. I never wear shoes, and then that's when I got into uh, that's got when I got into going barefoot. And it's lovely. You're like connected to the earth. That was but the first. Every time word I did. that comes out of my mouth, I'm like, oh, I'm a dirty hip. <laughs> 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 I'm looking at it. It's, I feel like it's it, like it makes, it makes people uncomfortable. It's a little bit new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, this guy's got extra Especially, skin. Especially, I, I don't even have beautiful feet. I have from an injury. <laughs> I have like all sorts of scarring oh, yeah, and. I don't know if we can. Where are we? Ooh, look at that! You look at the oh, foot cam. Oh, Podcast listeners, some, ooh, uh, visit there's YouTube some ooh on there. there. So we we're just to get this carpet clean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's oh, uh, so that's that's fun. No, that that's makes from me, some surgeries. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> your feet have kind of taken it. Yeah, uh, and but I mean, you kind of bounced back from yeah, that. Yeah, I you, broke my feet again. while hiking and. Uh, wearing barefoot running shoes, so maybe barefoot isn't the best. <laughs> is not Always, if you're tr if you're planning on jumping off things more than ten feet high, you're oh. definitely going to want something with a sole on them. But I because uh, you've talked a little bit about your recovery from that surgery, and opioid yeah. addiction is something that comes up all the time. But you kind of managed to buck doing a lot of the painkillers, right? Yeah, I did. I mean, I did. Uh, I mean, I would early on, I would tr kind of try to do opi opioids about once a week, okay. just to kind of reset when it, when it got so unmanageable that I just needed a reset. But uh, I really like, so I don't, I actually am not, I'm really particular about when I get high. I, I'm often not in the mood. Yeah. I, I smoke or eat weed like once or twice a week, which, for a comedian, that's like oh. never smoking yeah. weed. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, to, so to me, I'm like, <laughs> people are like, do you hate weed? What's wrong with you? But that's, that's, that's like more than enough you for stuff me. Too, right? Oh, yeah. I, I, like, oh, you run people are all, always, yeah, yeah. People are always giving me things <laughs> after shows, <laughs> which I'm usually like, I can't travel with this. Here you go, bartender. Right. Um, and But yeah, I like CBDs a lot mm -hmm. are good. Um, I got into, I, I don't know if it's legal in Colorado, I imagine it is, but I got into Kratom a little bit. I still, that makes me a little nervous to take it like on a daily basis, which I never did. And it's kind of like an opioid where it will block you up and everything yeah. else and anything. That's, like that's a bigger like Southern with. thing, right? Because I was just in North Carolina visiting never some people and they were, my, my cousin was like, oh shit, uh, sorry Dave. Uh, uh, yeah, and now I announced uh, him by name. Oh. Uh, but he was like, yeah, I got all this, you know, these pouches, you give it a try. And I, I was kind of nervous. So well, maybe I shouldn't have been. Or you're like, <laughs> look, it's better than it's better than uh, any painkiller doctor is going to give you for sure. The right. addiction rates are much much lower, but it's still acting the same as an opioid. I think it's still, I think that it's the scientific kind of phrasing of it is a partial opioid agnostic, whatever that means. Yeah, so it's okay. like very close to an opioid, but but. Uh, but it's, it's also definitely <laughs> it feels very similar, okay. but without the same withdrawal and and everything else, and and so, so that that was something that I would do 
maybe twice a week. And okay, so mixing those two things. Yeah, yeah. All right. And, and so I've and heard CBD. You, uh, and then some CBD. Uh, now, I've heard you in interviews say that you find pot kind of boring. Um, when was the last time yeah. you got high? Well, it hasn't been that long. Okay. Um, I was at this weird um, like camp out. It was like a psychedelic like Illuminati event with all these like what? amazing um, psychedelic artists, and only they were allowed to be like it wasn't open to the public or anything like that. Oh. And uh, it was really amazing. There was people painting like the most incredible things you've ever seen. They're on like forty hits of acid, just like <laughs> painting oh, wildly with like these things with incredible detail, like channeling something really incredible. Were the greys there by any chance? Uh, no, oh, okay. they weren't. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, like yeah, yeah like they were something. missing from it. <laughs> um, but I had, someone had this amazing... When I say greys, I mean aliens, just uh, so everybody's clear. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Alex or Gray is this never like heard really well-known psychedelic artist, um, specifically with DMT. But they had a little, uh, they had a, th their, one of the artists there made these amazing, I wish I could think of the name of the, I didn't know I was going to be talking about this, and sure. I would have remembered the name of the company, but he had these amazing handheld dab rigs. And I'm such a lightweight that dabs are just not for me. Sure. And me but either. he's like, he's <laughs> like, no, try that. You can. The nice thing about this is you can. You just like dab it in as it as it goes, and you can it's just like have a, a little bit. Nectar collector or something it, like it that. It looks like it. It looked like a, yeah. it, it. It very much looked like that actually. And and I had just like I'm like I'll have a half a hit. I had to lay down almost immediately. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. Like I felt great, but I I had to lay down or I would have passed out. Sure. And I have passed out from dabbing before. Um, People hold it. Was it a holding situation I or was it just too I much too quick? To, like, I, have, I have pretty sturdy lungs. Okay. And so <laughs> I'm used to like holding things in. I, I do a fair amount of DMT and that, like you have to take as big a hits as you possibly can and sure. hold it in for a while, blah, blah, blah. And so that's just my natural instinct, and this I think I might have went a little too long. But it was delightful, as long as I was laying down on the ground. Uh, that was the last time. The time before that was probably a week before that. So that was about a week ago. About a week before that, I had a little bit of edibles and went into a float tank, a sensory deprivation Ooh. tank. Okay, I'm interested in it that. It was so wonderful. I could Let's first do off, a tank together. First off, Free. never, ever, ever go into one of these places and be like, Man, I'm so high right now. I'm yeah. gonna go in it. Like, they know people are there, you know, <laughs> but you can't. There's liability involved. You can't you just like Don't shut your mouth. Just go in and do it. And like, definitely a little amount will. I mean, it was a full on, like. I almost like went into a seizure at one point. Like Whoa. it was powerful, okay, it, wait, and wait, I don't mean to say that off. like in a good, <laughs> a, in like a negative. It was like sometimes you you know when you uh, you know when you're falling asleep and you're like oh yeah, like you that. It was like that, but like ten of them in a row. But it was oh. like a but it was like an interesting power, which that sometimes happens when floating sober. Mm -hmm. But it was like a it, but it was like a really uh, energizing feeling too. And but it was it was more intense than many psychedelic trips that I've had. I was able to, like, I, s I figured out a lot of issues with, like, oh. business things that I was trying to sort out that I came to a lot of conclusions with, a lot of, like, family relationship stuff that I was able to sort out in, like, you know, an hour and a half, two what? hours in a float tank. Is it amazing? I'm talking, like, 20, yeah. uh, 20 grams of an edible. I forget if it was Indica or Sativa. Um, I think it was Indica. Um, um, Steve always makes me a little paranoid, but um, and edibles without the oh terpenes no no really that's the other way around um, no no sativa indicas make you paranoid right yeah yeah it depends no, no indica couch no it was <laughs> indica I always see I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm definitely, I don't consider myself a weed. I'm, I'm fairly knowledgeable about psychedelics. Um, there's people far more knowledgeable than me, but weed is a thing that is like, you know, I, st I started smoking weed like 22 years ago, and mm -hmm. then it was like whatever was around. So that's what I like right. about the new world. where this is like I had this lucid mood where you guys have had on Yeah, before. Charles came on before. Um, I had him on my podcast because I had their... They're kind of catered to people that don't normally smoke. It's a little milder, and mm -hmm. they've tweaked things, and that's that's what I'm into. Like a nice, mild, still very functional, chill experience. And so sometimes, I, I remember when I first got my weed card in California. I was like, I went into a dispensary, 
And I was like, money is no object. <laughs> Get me all of your finest everything. You know, it's just like the most exciting day of my life. Sure. And I quickly learned that I don't need to be spending $70 on an eighth of weed because mm. one hit and I'm out of my mind and now I'm not <laughs> functional for four hours. I can just got, get the $5 a gram jar of shake, you know, <laughs> of, of the, if all that good stuff's mixed in there anyway. So that's like typically, honestly, what I, what I usually go with. And, okay. I, get the, and I, I, I just like accidentally wore this and then and, and I was like, oh, oh yeah, this, oh, is, this, oh, is, a, this is a good fit. This is, I'm, I don't work for them or anything. But okay, but the disclaimer is out there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this is like genuinely just, uh, it, it's exciting to find the things that work for you, you know, and, that, and that's what, that's what uh, areas like Colorado are able to open up. Yeah, and give people an opportunity to really experience a, a vast majority. I always talk about it, uh, especially medically, is like if you were on uh, you know, blood pressure medication and one of them didn't work for you and just be like, well, now I have high blood pressure, you'd keep trying different things. Right. Um, but I like that you don't necessarily talk about bad trips, you talk about difficult trips. Yeah. If somebody is you know, visiting Colorado and they have had a you know, 100 milligram bar and they're lying in their hotel room like Maureen Dowd. I mean, what kind of advice do you have for somebody who's in the midst of like a difficult high? Well, so if you're, if you're looking to do some preventative um, work, I would definitely recommend getting into meditation. If you can learn yeah. through meditation, even if you just do it for a while and then like it's hard to keep up with sometimes and you can't do it every day but do you do the app just kind of uh, i use uh, headspace.com headspace? and i had uh, and they're they're amazing i had them on um andy puttycomb on my podcast as well because uh he's uh, i think brilliant kind of trying to destigmatize and demystify meditation it's just the practices mm -hmm. there's no chakra talk and so not that there's anything wrong with that but if i'm hearing that like it just takes me out of it okay. um and so uh, what is your favorite chakra, by the way? Is it crown? I don't know the chakras. Okay. I don't want to hear about chakras. I don't want to talk about chakras. Um, <laughs> that's, I'm just like closed-minded in that. I'm like a very science-oriented sure. guy, and I haven't seen any real publications about chakras. So, um, <laughs> in like the Journal of Science and Medicine or whatever. But, um, but I, I would say that training your mind to be able to accept what is happening mm -hmm. uh, what people get themselves into and it's so hard to do of like you feel this negative feeling and then you're like i want to push this away i don't want to feel this way or you feel this positive feeling like more of that more of that and then like when that wears off you're like oh it doesn't Where's feel as good as it good? did and just kind of accepting uh, training yourself to really accept these uh, whatever comes at you is like the single most important thing for um, psychoactive safety, I would say. Okay, so just being able to accept something's happening in a yeah. moment and then let go of it in the same way that Know your dose, set and setting, you know. Set and setting's important. And I mean, I think a lot of times people, uh, people go to concerts and they're like, you know, they're not terribly experienced and then they're like, well, when in Rome, someone just gave me this tense trip of LSD, I guess I can just try that because I'm at this concert and everyone else is. And then all of a sudden they're having some memory of some past childhood trauma <laughs> come up and like this. Oh no. And you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it, it's really important to do some research ahead of time online and figure and learn about set and setting is, is but the, that's the silly thing, too. And when too. we talk about set and setting, that's mindset and then the physical yes, place yes, that you're yes, in for yes. people that aren't experienced. Yeah, yeah. So mindset, just kind of setting intentions ahead of time. And then afterwards, too, allowing some time for integration and kind of thinking about it and processing it. Like the three days after a mushroom trip, to me, are way more important than, um, and oftentimes more pleasurable than the trip itself. Um, and... And so you're getting so much more out of it rather than just being like, well, that was a fun trip yesterday and that's yeah. over. Well that's, I. Little, that's the way a lot of people kind of do, um, do drugs in general. And it's also funny that like us amongst the, uh, you know, the, the weed communities and the psychedelic communities are, are so much more cautious, I guess, that we have to be a lot of time. But 
you don't need to do disclaimers like this for alcohol. Like, if I had to do <laughs> disclaimers for alcohol, like, during my show... So be in the right set and setting before you yeah, have your Budweiser. Yeah, I, mean, and I would be fired from everywhere. Sure. Like, I'm, it's basically my job to, to peddle get drinks drunk. to people. <laughs> to and drink minimum at people are, You know, people drive home and everything else, and alcohol is one of the, it is probably the single most problematic drug that there is just because of how prevalent it is. And, how recklessly it's used and everything else, and and not not that I like I like alcohol. I'm not talking smack about alcohol, but <laughs> but uh, but you know that's it's it's funny that we feel the need to like well be very careful when you do mushrooms and weed and blah, blah, blah. like people don't do this stuff with alcohol. Mm. You might see a silly disclaimer at the end of an alcohol commercial, but they don't. They don't mean it, you know. Well, you're seeing a, like a little bit more normalization <laughs> here in Colorado, where it's like, okay, we need to know about edibles because they can have just such a dramatic effect. Because a lot of people don't have any experience right. in looking inside of themselves when they're having these, you know, kind of psychotropic experiences, and so they freak out a little. And I mean, I still screw up. I, I was at, uh, <laughs> I was at, I was at the, was at the psychedelic science conference, like the biggest psychedelic conference in the in the world it was every four years and this back in april and i'm there and someone gave me these edible mints thc mints and i was like well okay i like edibles so I'll, I'll have a few of these i think they were like two and a half grams so i was like well i'll do like four of them 10 grams is, yeah, a, little is like a very mild thing. amount for me 15 i'm like well okay like 20 <laughs> i'm like yeah, yeah you should probably cut it out there and then like 30 if i really want to go full in and and uh for me, per and everyone needs to find. But I got more high than expected, kind of forgot that I was high, had this tin of edibles in my pocket, <laughs> and I love mints. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. So I just started gobbling mints. Oh, no. And next thing I know, I'm like, ah, oh, here you are laying on the floor again. And it wasn't, it actually wasn't a negative experience, but no. it was. Like Good. dosing is so important, and knowing what you're doing, and being safe about that is things that like even people with experience can screw up. That's so. when uh, down at Hell Yes Fest in New Orleans, there was the guy that was walking around with just the little like uh, r radio flyer truck full of chocolates, mushroom chocolates, and we were like, sure, we'll take a few, Ooh. and. Yeah, that was uh, that was a weird night, oh. <laughs> especially in like a city we had never been to before. Um, yeah. Speaking yeah. of going to cities, uh, we have a lot of people that come to Colorado and they want to use pot to kind of have this religious experience, and they kind of feel like let down at the end of it that they didn't get as high as they thought. They they didn't have this breakthrough that they thought they would have. What, in, in your opinion, is kind of the the best city for psychedelic tourism right now? And we can go worldwide. Denver and Boulder's really good. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of uh, like interesting underground stuff here. There's a lot of professional stuff. There's the people that that tour uh, that uh, sponsored my tour, Maps, um, Maps, the Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Studies. Yes, they're they're doing work in Boulder, and um, I mean, this is this is people with severe PTSD right. issues, but. But that, that is to say that there's a lot of stuff going on. There's, I, I just did um, some, I just did breath work yesterday, actually, which I'd never done before and I was pretty skeptical of, mm -hmm. of just like kind of laying on the ground and this guided. Um, and someone breathes into your mouth <laughs> and then you, you accept <laughs> doing, it. Uh, doing <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, mind. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically, breathe in and out. You're like, here, I can show you right now. Let's just, just give each other CPR. Um, but it was just kind of this guided, you're breathing in this certain way for like an hour and a half, and about 20 minutes in, you start tripping. And that, that's a, that's, and I was pretty skeptical of that, but I sure. was literally like, it, it, was, it was way more intense than I would have ever predicted. And sure. I mean, I've done like five minute breathing exercises before that are, uh, that, that ultimately were kind of like a mild mushroom trip. So there's ways of like looking into doing kind of maybe safer, more legal things. Sure, just until they out, they might home. outlaw breathing, you know, <laughs> once it corrupts all the youth. Of Regulate today, breathing like alcohol. alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> I was curious, um, you seem to have really found your niche. Like this sounds perfect for you. I can't talk about tripping at all because I never did it. But how did you figure out 
that that was something you were good at talking about and start marketing that to people, start getting sponsorship. Like it sounds like you got some perfect sponsorship for what you're doing right now. It all happened so naturally. I I made I started wanting to do themed shows with um, kind of a science bent to it, and I had a, a special that was on Netflix for a while called Mating Season that was kind of about evolutionary biology and psychology, and it's kind of my first whack at introducing some bigger study ideas. Any of that? What's that? Did you study? No, just something that always fascinated me and I read a lot about. And so that's, but I But then when you're going to Fringe, is, it seems like everybody that go that tries to go to Fringe wants a theme show now. Um, uh, yeah, the Edinburgh um, yeah. Comedy Festival. Uh, yeah, I, I've been there. Yeah, I took that show there. And that was my first time doing a theme show. I learned a lot from it. I had a special, or I had a, not a special, an album about breaking my feet called My Big Break that was about kind of <laughs> the evolution of negative emotions, which is a lot about what I'm going to be talking um, about tonight at Nerd Night um, in Denver. And then in doing podcasts, talking about how I broke my feet. Where were you? I was in Sedona. What were you doing in Sedona? <laughs> well, I was going there to do ayahuasca for the first time, which I didn't get to do because um, I broke my feet while hiking. Um, and what's ayahuasca? Well, I smoked this stuff DMT. What's DMT? And once I started talking about DMT, people are like, whoa. <laughs> and then people are like, well, you come on my podcast and talk about DMT. And then next thing I know, I'm like some DMT comedian. And then <laughs> <laughs> I was like, well, I have all this material. Just right. I always had little bits of material about psychedelics in my act from you know, when I started 13 years ago. I, I mean, my very first album had one little chunk about mushrooms in it. And um, so I put together, I was like, well, maybe this will be my next themed one, put it together. And the audience w response was so crazy to it, like so engaged and mm -hmm. people just absolutely loved it so much. So I was like, well, maybe I'll put together a tour and then things just started blowing up and then um, I started connecting with the maps people to have them on my podcast and then they offered to sponsor the tour and every I didn't like try to like maybe this is an angle that I could it all just happened so naturally mm -hmm. and I don't know that I necessarily want to be like the psychedelic comedian for life or anything I want to be sure. the science comedian if anything yeah. um, but watch out uh, John Ozilay <laughs> he's coming for you <laughs> John was great I, th I, I hope that there's a bunch of us yeah. out there like Matt Kirshen does, uh, does some Hansberger probably really some stuff oh yeah Huntsberger for yeah. a very long time has been has been doing some incredible uh, stuff and uh, so it's going to be know, what the, sci the the scientists of comedy tour coming out to I, I would love you. that I would love that you know I for years I've been trying to get people to be like hey come and hear a comedy show about how the brain works and that can be a really hard <laughs> thing to market for people Saturday people night bring your day drugs <laughs> and so and psychedelics are a great way to introduce ideas about consciousness and perception and and um, talk about this kind of what is this life stuff and and um, you know I, the various ways of interpreting it and so so you know for now I am going to keep on pursuing mm. this uh, I I'm working with psychedelic artists now I found an artist that uh, has figured out how to basically um, do a really nice VR representation of a DMT trip and so there what? So I'm going to start doing. Oh man, that's a I have realm. a DMT yeah. talk. Yeah. There's a lot of my realms right there. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start doing a DMT talk eventually, where people will come in and we'll have little, um, kind of uh, cheap little um, what, disposable like VR, like cardboard card ones, yeah. so people can put them on at certain points during my act, and he'll they'll be able to have a VR experience. No. idea. Taking stuff to the next level, oh, man. <laughs> and so... All right, all right well, yeah. let's take the show to the next level. It yeah. is time for Pot or Not. Nice. <laughs> all right, what, what's, uh, how, many, how many are there again? So there's 10. Our high score is 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10. Oh, I'm so nervous right now. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're like, well, uh, listen. Uh, Should we're I gonna get have the fun sandals back on for <laughs> this? <Yeah. or? laughs> <sighs> Only if you're tempted to run. Um, all right, we're gonna do it. Just tell me if you think it's pot or not. Sometimes they are things. Uh, sometimes strains are named after actual items. Other times they just sound like pots. All right, let's go. Number one, G13. Pot not. or not? 
It is. That's the ah. legendary uh, University of Alabama strain, as noted. Oh, <laughs> no <laughs> way. I, still, beauty. I can still miss two more and still tie for the. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Wait, what? It's it, that was. They mentioned it in American Beauty. Yeah, that was the one that. Uh, it's the no stress, no anxiety G13. Uh, number two, Afgu. Not. It is. Ah. Also known as Afgooey. I hate this. Old thing. Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. All right, we're going to see if I we can get him every two, past three out of ten. person that did better than me. Can he do a very acid competitive or not? person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, number three, ah. Chug. Is Chug pot or not? <laughs> not. <laughs> it's not. Oh. It's just a combination of a chihuahua and a pug. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, number four. So you got one point. Uh, number four, Coco Crisp. Oh, that's pot. That is not. That's a baseball player. Oh, <laughs> Journeyman baseball player. I got to get all the, the rest right. <laughs> uh, number five, Dandruff. <laughs> not. <laughs> it's not. That's just the. That's why I laugh because that would be. They really all yeah. could be marijuana names. Yeah, yeah. It's all right. Well, like, no matter how weird he gets uh, with them, it's like, yeah, I suppose that. That's <laughs> just dandruff. Dandruff. <laughs> <laughs> you just be like, it's super crystally, right? That'd yeah. be a name for just a super trike dust. Or maybe like some sort of like. Concentrate. Yeah. yeah. And then afterwards, you can go to the the uh, restaurant called Parasites <laughs> and eat there after you <laughs> smoke your dandruff. <laughs> smoke your dandruff, <laughs> folks. <laughs> All right, number six, truffle butter. That's got to be pot. It is. Right. Chocolate kush crossed with gelato. It's also the worst thing you can look up on right Urban now? Dictionary. Don't, doing? I was about to say, let's you not know. even talk about it. <laughs> He's Little up. Wayne has a song. Yeah, all Little right, so that, what, that's three now? So nervous right now. Guys. All right, so number seven, Golden Teacher. Golden Teacher. That sounds like pot. It's not. That's actually oh! a variety of mushrooms. Oh, no. Yeah, it's it's a what? Uh, a variety of psychedelic mushroom, Golden uh. Teachers. All right. yeah, I'm extra you ashamed real, of uh, <laughs> I'm a fraud. That was I'm a, a fraud. That was what a the trick. hell is this? You I'm a fraud. I don't know anything. The gotcha question. <laughs> All right, we got three more. Uh, number eight, Sorcerer's Apprentice. That's pot. That is totally pot. Uh, number nine, Snowman <laughs> Blood. <laughs> No, man, blood is not. It's not. That's just another phrase for water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. And number 10, Tangerine Dream. That's pot. That's pot as well. All right. Uh, so that's ten. not bad. That uh, ties that our second highest seven. score. Okay. So you're number two oh, on the right. list. Along now, with, how many uh, people got seven? Uh, only one. Oh, okay. And two right. people right. have uh, had six, and right. only four people have played. Okay. So All right. <laughs> you're still, you're tied for second all time. <laughs> okay. Snowman blood. Nice. Snowman blood. Who said that? Vince? <laughs> that's all right, uh, come out with. Let's do plugs. What do you got going on, Janae? Oh, okay. So, Pussy Bros Presents. Um, Pussy Bros Presents every first Friday, so July 7th. I'll be there at Comedy Room Room. And end of plug. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember the other stuff. My calendar's pretty full. It's, it's pretty good, but I can't remember. Uh, where, where can people find you? You're just on the road. Are you taking some time off? Are you going to spend some time? Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm doing a documentary about psychedelics right now, so I'm taking July and August kind of off to focus on that, but I'm Congrats. also going to be workshopping my new DMT talk with the art involved in the animation. We're getting projectors, we're doing all that, and, and uh, so I'm working on finding actually some outdoor locations and like have a box truck with a mobile comedy venue and that's looking like August we're going to be doing that but wow. I don't have the date but just Shane Moss M A U S S dot com You think that'll um, be in Colorado? I want to do it in Colorado eventually, absolutely. Cool. I'm uh, I'm gonna talk with some of the people around town that are doing all the cool things. There's a lot of people and doing a lot of cool things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. This uh, this would be a wonderful, wonderful place for it. So so yeah, I'd uh, I'd like to, for it to be an outside like camp out situation oh eventually, man. but Ooh. I'll find some cool little okay, indie on your website. In the I want to go. Yeah, I want exactly. to go try mushrooms in the woods with a friend. Oh, you should. I should? Yeah. Golden Teacher specifically? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, it, you're, you're probably not going to have much say in the matter. Talk it's, to me out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, 
My mushrooms aren't that different from one another. They they are, but you know, whatever. You're gonna be you're gonna be fine. Okay. Do do a small amount, you know, set and setting. Yeah. The the woods, if you're outside, uh, it's wonderful. I like that you set and drive. setting. I haven't heard it said like that, mm -hmm. and it makes so much it's sense. It's uh, we didn't make that up. That's a very old yeah, kind of we'll standard mo the model. Um, I think that was kind of that was uh, oh, a lot of Timothy Leary. Leary and okay. and, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. uh, speaking of set and setting, you can find me. I'm going to be out at the Chalice Festival at San Bernardino Fairgrounds, uh, the 7th through the 10th, I want to say. Uh, so if you're in Southern California, again, hit me up uh, at Big Jake Brown on Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, all that good stuff. Uh, thanks so much to Shane Moss for joining us today. And thank you for tuning in. You know the drill. Rate, review, repeat for Janae Burris, producer events, and the rest of the Cannabis Show crew. I'm Jake Brown. We'll see you next week. Shut my fucking mouth to show the sound of truth. I'm allowed to look. Lose the truth to win, I'm all in, I'm calling any pots that you'll be raising at the end, I'll say it again, ain't afraid to get in, I'll be going for the jackpot with aces in my hem, I'm raw.